Put your pencils down. A famous test is going all digital. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English lesson number 444. JR is the producer, and he has uploaded the full lesson to plainenglish.com slash 444. Coming up today, the SAT is one of two standardized tests that students use in their applications to colleges and universities. This is the year 2022, and the test is still administered with paper and pencil, a number two pencil to be exact. But that is about to change as the test makers are adopting a digital format starting in 2024. And so, an almost century-old ritual will take a modern form in just a few years. However, the SAT may never be what it once was. We'll tell you why later on in the lesson. We have an expression for you today, just in case. The video lesson online will discuss a way to talk about something that will happen in the future, and we have a quote of the week. Let's dive in. They are three small letters that strike fear in the hearts of teenagers in the United States. S A T. It stands for the Scholastic Aptitude Test, a standardized test high schoolers here usually take in preparation for college. The College Board is a private company that administers the test, and they announced major changes in the format of the SAT starting in 2024. But this comes at a time when many universities are starting to doubt whether the SAT provides much value in analyzing prospective students. When the SAT goes all digital in 2024, it may be a much diminished version of itself. For those of you who don't know, high school in America is a four-year experience that usually runs from about age 14 to about age 18. After that, high school graduates have a number of options. Many leave school and begin their careers in the workforce. But those who want to further their education can choose a four-year college or university. They can choose a two-year associate's degree, or they can choose from a variety of vocational programs designed to teach a specific skill. Students who want to go to a four-year degree must submit applications, usually in the winter or spring of their senior year, their last year in high school. The application includes a transcript of the applicant's grades, a personal essay, and, critically, test scores. There are two widely accepted tests in the U.S. system, the SAT and the ACT. The SAT is more popular, so we'll talk about that one today. The SAT is not a test about specific things you learned in school. Instead, it's intended to measure how well you can read, how well you can write, and how well 
you can deal with numbers. It's supposed to be about your problem-solving skills, your logic, and time management. Most of the test is multiple choice, and you use a number two pencil to fill in the circle that corresponds with your choice. For generations, high schoolers had to come prepared with several pencils just in case. They had to be sharp, those pencils, and all the answer bubbles had to be completely filled in. The test is three hours long and is administered by representatives of the college board to prevent cheating. After three hours, the administrator tells you to put your pencils down. But come 2024, high school students will put their pencils down for good. That's because the college board announced the test would become all digital. Students will be able to take the tests on laptops or tablets, but still in a supervised environment. They also announced that the test would be shortened from three hours to two hours. The results will come faster, too. Today, students have to wait months to get their results from this test. After the changes, results will be available in a matter of weeks. The content of the test will change too. The current SAT has long reading passages. You have to read a page or two about an unfamiliar topic, like the mating habits of some obscure animal. Then, you have to answer several questions about what you read. The test makers said that in the new format, the passages will be shortened and they'll provide a wider range of topics. There will also be fewer questions per passage. But will this improve the SAT's fortunes? The number of students taking the test has declined over the years, as many colleges and universities place a lower emphasis on test scores. Many universities are saying standardized tests are now optional. The massive University of California system, which is comprised of 10 schools, has gone even further. They don't even consider test scores even if students want to submit them. The pandemic has accelerated the trend. In 2020, many universities temporarily waived their standardized testing requirements. Harvard University said that for the next four years, submitting test scores will be optional. The number of students taking the SAT plummeted, though in 2021, numbers have bounced back a little. By the time the test changes, test scores may be seen as less of a must-have for college applicants and more of a potential enhancement of an application. I got 
a 1250 on my SATs. The range of scores is 400 to 1600. I would say 1250 is good, but certainly not excellent. If you wanted to get into the most prestigious universities, which I did not, but if you did want that, you needed to score in the high 1400s or even 1500s. The SAT is a big moment in high school. It's like your intelligence and your prospects for life all summarized in a single number. 1,500, you can be a surgeon. 1,400, you can be a doctor. 1,300, you could be a professor of literature or something. 1,250, maybe you can have an online business someday. I'm just joking. Looking back on it, it seems arbitrary and unimportant, but at the time, it was everything. All right, this is an easy one. Today's expression is just in case. This is a little expression that we add at the end of a sentence to communicate that we're doing something as a precaution. This is one of those expressions that doesn't carry much meaning in itself. It enhances the meaning of the sentence it's in. When I took the SATs, I had to bring my own number two pencil. That's the yellow wooden pencil with the lead in the middle and the pink eraser on the top. A number two pencil is a simple little tool, but a lot can go wrong in a high stakes environment. The wood at the tip can get splintered. You might break it accidentally. You might use up the eraser. You might write so much that you use up the entire pencil. Or maybe misfortune will befall someone else in the room and you'd like to be a good Samaritan and lend that person an extra pencil. So that's why, in a high-stakes environment like the SAT, it's a good idea to bring a couple of pencils just in case. It's a good idea to bring a couple of pencils as a precaution. You probably won't need those extra pencils, but there's a small probability that something will go wrong with your primary pencil and you have a lot riding on your ability to fill in those bubbles. So we state the precaution and then we add the words just in case to communicate that we're doing it as a precaution. As I record this, I'm in Mexico City. The weather is amazing. It's warm and sunny during the day and cool at night. I often don't need a sweatshirt or jacket at night, but if I go out for a few hours, I usually bring a sweatshirt just in case. Most of the time, I don't even put the sweatshirt on. But I bring it as a precaution because the nights can get cool here. I bring a sweatshirt just 
in case. Do you have one of those portable phone chargers? New phones have long-lasting batteries, and you probably don't need a portable charger. But if you use a lot of data, or if you're out for a long time, you might bring a portable charger just in case. That's just in case you run out of batteries before you get home. Can you proofread a document on a screen? I usually can, but if I'm sending a really important document, I usually proofread a printed version just in case. Sometimes you need a printed version to catch mistakes like borders, text size, or colors. That's why I usually print really important documents at work before I send them off. I print them just in case. I probably don't need to proofread a printed version, but I do it as a precaution. Sometimes you don't even need to state the reason you're doing something. If you say, just in case, the other person will know that you're doing something for protection. I'm in a different country. Whenever I travel to a different country, I always make sure to leave at least one credit card and some cash in my room. I do that just in case. Do you see what I mean? Someone might ask me, why are you leaving cash in your suitcase in the apartment? And I can answer, well, I'm doing it just in case. So do I need to explain why? Probably not. This is a famous, famous quote in English. Here it is. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. The person who said it was not a management guru, but a historian. See Northcott Parkinson in 1955. It's famous in business circles. If you assign three people a job and allow them a week to do it, they'll take a week to do it. Even if they could do it in three days, they'll usually take all the available time to do it. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. I see that all the time in my work. Have you ever wondered why so much work gets done right at the very end of the allotted time? Yeah. Well, that's all for today's Plain English Thanks again for making plain English part of your routine. Remember that if you're not yet a member online, you can unlock some great features just by joining at plainenglish.com. And a lot of those features are free, by the way. You can read the transcript online browse our 444 lesson archive and unlock a bonus vocabulary word or expression for each lesson that's called learn the lingo this is where we pick out one more informal word or phrase from each lesson and we give you the definition 
There's more too. Free members can double click on any topic by reading one of the English articles that I use to prepare the lesson. All that is free. You don't have to pay. You don't have to give a credit card number. Just create a profile at plainenglish.com and you'll get it all on a brand new homepage just for you. So go to plainenglish.com and you'll see what to do. We'll be back on Thursday to discuss the right to repair things like tractors and cell phones. See you then.